here it is. This is my M1 MacBook Pro 13. And in this video, I'm gonna go over my thoughts and impressions of this device so far. I'm gonna go over things that I really like about my M1 MacBook Pro 13. And then I'm gonna go over things that I wish to see improved, not only in, in this device in the future, but in future Apple devices that have the M Apple Silicon installed inside them. I also have a unboxing video of this laptop, so be sure you check that out. That will be linked in the description below. Starting off with what did I actually get in my MacBook Pro 13? First off, I got the Pro over the air. I got 16 gigabytes of RAM, and I got one terabyte of solid state storage, and I got Apple Care Plus. So what was my reasoning behind all three of these things? Well, I wanted the Pro over the air because the Pro has a better cooling solution, having a fan. And I just like the overall look of the Pro better. I don't mind the touch bar, and I definitely am not a fan of the wedge shape that the Air has. I do like the more symmetrical industrial look of the Pro, I think it looks a lot nicer. Now, as far as the 16 gigabytes of RAM goes, I am a web developer and I do personal projects on my machines that often require more than eight gigabytes of RAM for compiling and testing. These kind of things work so much better on 16 gigs of RAM. I am also a photographer, so storing photos on my laptop can eat up a lot of space, therefore I went with the one terabyte option. For Apple Care Plus, I wanted the peace of mind that comes with having a Apple warranty on my machine. These laptops are fragile and they are expensive, so having that accidental coverage and the three years hardware support, it really was a no-brainer for me and the extra cost involved with that was, was no issue when it came to the benefits of Apple Care Plus. What are my overall thoughts of the M1 powered MacBook Pro 13? Frankly, it's excellent. I have wanted this combination of power and portability for so long in laptops and now that it's reality, it, it's, it's crazy. And on top of that, add the incredible battery life that you get with this machine, and this thing is just awesome. I have had to settle for bigger 15-inch laptops because when it came to power over portability, in my specific workflow scenarios with coding and video and photo editing, the 15-inch powerhouse would always win. And I was really wanting something that was more portable and had the form factor of a 13 inch with that 15 inch power. This has it and it has the battery life to exceed expectations. So I am very thrilled overall with this machine. Now, what has my experience been in those specific workflows? Editing my photos in Lightroom. The experience has been about the same as it is on my 15 inch MacBook Pro with uh, Intel i7. And I can get most or I can get everything that I used to do in that machine done on this machine and it, it works fine. It's, it's, a, it's a good experience. Now, what about in terms of software development? For 99% of the experience, it's been great. I am able to get software off of Homebrew. I am able to compile, run tests, uh, install dependencies, just as well as I did on my old Intel-based Mac. One of the things that I haven't been able to do that is different from the Intel Mac is get Docker running on this machine because currently Docker does not uh, work at all on these MacBooks. That is one inconsistency in the software development that I'm used to on Macs. Now, in terms of gaming, I do play games occasionally from time to time and typically this has only been done on my gaming desktop that has a Ryzen CPU and an RTX 2080. Now, this machine is not a gaming machine, but it has exceeded my expectations in games. I am able to play World of Warcraft at 60 frames per second at a downsampled resolution on medium graphics, and that is pretty good. Also, 
I can play Rust on this machine, a game that is very heavy resource intensive. I can play it on basically medium settings at a reduced resolution at about 60 frames per second, and that really speaks to the power that is inside this laptop. I've gone over with you my experiences with the M1 MacBook Pro 13, so what do I like and what do I dislike about it? Well, the main thing I like about the MacBook Pro 13 is the power you get in the small form factor. That is the number one, hands down, the thing I like the most about this machine. The second thing would be the battery life. The battery life has just been incredible. This thing just goes and goes and goes and doesn't need to charge all that often. Another thing is the screen. I, I like the screens that they put in these MacBooks. They're color accurate, they're bright, and it really helps when uh, video editing and, and photo editing. Another thing is the keyboard. They recently revamped the keyboard. I think it was in the last generation of MacBook Pros, and uh, it's it's for the better. This this keyboard is, is great. They should have never done what they had with the previous generation keyboard, but they have since fixed it, and this, this one is definitely better. Another thing is the cooling in this laptop. I am so used to my i7 Micro Pro 15, which is right there, out of frame, and it, it, it gets hot at doing, doing anything. Uh, you hear the fans, it gets hot. It's not comfortable to just have on my lap and be there without burning a hole in my legs. And same with my, my work MacBook Pro 15, which is the uh, 2018, it's the newer slim version of the MacBook Pro, and that thing just gets hot, and it sounds like a jet engine when I'm compiling code or running tests on code. It is not an enjoyable experience. This laptop does not get hot. It gets warm, but not hot, and not warm enough to be uncomfortable on my lap. I've never heard the fan on this laptop. I don't even know if the fan works on this machine because ever since I got it, I haven't heard it. Um, I'm convinced that there is a bug in Big Sur that disables the fan on these new machines, but it doesn't get hot. So in what scenarios does the fan turn on on this machine? I guess we'll just have to find out with time. What do I not like? about this machine. The number one thing is the touch bar. Actually, I don't mind the touch bar, but I think it could be drastically improved by having dedicated physical buttons for the volume, brightness, uh, the lock screen, and then just having the touch bar just just small, scoot it over. Just have the touch bar for things that make sense, like, like Chrome, like IntelliJ, it is so nice for IntelliJ, because all you gotta do is just hit one button and your code is compiling. Uh, Lightroom, just make small adjustments on the touch bar, that's fine, but have those dedicated buttons that everyone uses there. Another issue is the GPU drivers. I think that the GPU drivers on the M1 chip are not ready yet. I think that is the most immature part of this laptop. Now, the graphics performance is, is great for integrated graphics. Like I said, this machine can play games. But the drivers need to be more mature. For an example, whenever I'm scrolling through large files of code, this machine is not as smooth as my work laptop, which has an i7-8750H in it. This processor is technically more powerful than that processor, However, the experience on this machine is not as smooth, which I attribute to the, the GPU drivers. There's also been some weird scenarios where this machine is connected to an external display and the lid is closed, so basically using it as a desktop replacement, and the external display will just shut off. And the only way to get it back is to open it and then it sends the signal to the monitor and the monitor turns back on. It doesn't happen consistently and therefore I think it is a driver issue. The next thing is the incompatibility issues. So no Docker on software development. That is a little painful, but it, it doesn't interrupt the uh, software development process at all. Like you don't need Docker to make good software. They're working. 
uh, around the clock to, to get it compatible and working on this machine. So just software developers out there, hang tight. Another thing is the inability to virtualize Windows. I don't really have a need to virtualize Windows, but that is kind of a big thing. Like Windows is on so many machines around the world. So much software is compatible with Windows and to not have a solution to virtualize it on this machine at all currently, that's a big deal. And that's a, that's a reason people should look at this and um, question whether or not this is right for them. Would I recommend the M1 MacBook Pro 13 for you to go out and buy right now? Well, that answer depends. I would say if you're a professional and your financial stability and success depends on the machine that you use, do not get this machine. This is a great machine, but it is not at a professional workload level yet. It is very close. I think it will get there soon, within the next six to 12 months when Apple releases more software updates and, and they start releasing the 16 inch MacBook Pro with Apple Silicon. But until then, no, not for professional use. If you're a student or you do not rely on this machine to put a roof over your head and feed you, then absolutely, yes, I would 100% recommend this machine. This machine is great. It's compatible with 99% of the software that you're gonna be using. The only thing to keep in mind is if you're a computer science student, I still would probably recommend the MacBook Pro Intel version just because of some software incompatibilities. But um, other than that, go for it. These M1 Macs are setting the stage for the future of computing. I believed for a long time before these Silicon Macs even came out that the x86 architecture is out of the door. It's just not growing at the rate that it once used to in the early 2000s, in the early 10s, and our machines are aligning more and more with the architecture that is in our mobile devices. And I think this machine represents a whole lot more than just a new MacBook or just a new laptop. I think this is going to be the machine that starts the new revolution of computing. I, I truly believe that. And I think we are in for a very exciting decade. This has been my overview of the M1 MacBook Pro 13. Also, let me know what you want me to cover on this machine. I can make additional videos highlighting specific points of this machine that you want to see. So let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. And to everyone out there, have a good day. Stay safe. I'm Taylor Brower, and I will see you soon.